most basic belief behind Never Again is that there should never again be another massacre in a high school by a school shooter. That's a very simple idea many adults, I think, find naive. At least 17 people are dead in Parkland, Florida on Wednesday. The world saw very quickly that the teenagers of Marjorie Stone and Douglas High School were not just going to accept thoughts and prayers. They weren't going to accept that kind of consolation. They felt that what had happened to them could have been prevented. As I got there, many of the students from the high school were there to console each other. When you're in high school, your friends are really the only people that understand you. The first indication that I had that this was following a different narrative was a tweet that I saw retweeted from a student named Sarah Chadwick. She had responded to President Trump's condolences with a defiant rejection of them. She said, I don't want your condolences. One of the students that had been active on social media and speaking with the news media was named Cameron Kasky. And the night after the vigil that happened the day after the shooting, he invited some friends from Drama Club, mostly, over to his house to discuss how they could use their individual voices to combine into a coherent message and start a movement. The name he came up with was Never Again, which he felt was something that was non-political. They all got together and started discussing how to come up with a coherent message and a plan to reach lawmakers, to reach the public, to boycott the NRA. All of those things were on the table from the very beginning. This is one of the best public high schools in Florida. It's an affluent community. Jacqueline Corrin, she's the junior class president. She told me that she had written a 50-page project just two months before on the issue of gun control for her AP composition and rhetoric class, where she'd had to go through and consider all sides of the issue, consider how special interest groups like the NRA use their power to mobilize their base and fund lawmakers. They, they were very well-versed in how this issue plays out in the political arena. One of the students that was emerging as an activist was a senior named Emma Gonzalez, and she had appeared in national news interviews speaking very eloquently about the need for gun control. Emma Gonzalez came up on stage and spoke with just so much raw emotion and a very pointed and specific critique where she made it clear that she knew as much about policy as any lawmaker. She was ready to go head to head with people that claimed it was all right for anybody to go in and buy an AR-15. I'm asking your opinion as a representative of the NRA. She was just immediately recognized as a powerful voice and an iconic figure. So by the sixth day, there were funerals every day that week. The memorial in this public park that had been set up had attracted people from all over the country to help the students grieve. And meanwhile, the activism was taking place at a very rapid pace. Jacqueline Corrin had put out a call to invite 100 students up to Tallahassee to speak with state lawmakers about the possibility of passing some gun control laws in the immediate aftermath of this tragedy. These students gathered in a parking lot outside of a public supermarket, and they got on three buses and caravaned the eight hours up to North Florida. The student activists knew that they were going to meet with one of the most pro-gun state legislatures in the country. Laws like the Stand Your Ground law, the Concealed Weapon law, many of these laws were pioneered in Florida by a lobbyist named Marion Hammer. After the students left for Tallahassee, I decided to go by the high school. There was a big crowd of young people and I started talking to a student named Catherine Silva, 
And it turned out that she and her classmates had marched to Parkland from West Boca Raton High School, which was 12 miles away. I realized then that the activism wasn't limited to the students at Parkland. We are we are so I understood that the passion around this issue was bigger than one school. The state legislature in Florida is a very old school place. And these students with all their passion and all their urgency were not gonna disrupt business as usual. We will wait. Disarm hate. We they will wanted wait. to have a face-to-face -face conversation where they shared their message that not everybody should be able to buy a military grade assault weapon. I think the focus on activism prolonged the news cycle of an event like this. Usually the media would come and cover the tragedy and cover the biography of the shooter and the biographies of the victims and then depart. And the way in which certain of the students became very well-known personalities very quickly also attracted the derision of people who called them crisis actors. The students handled with humor. They were not scared of those messages. I think it's also important to remember that while there are a group of activist students that are out there in front of the media, I spoke with many students that were not on camera, have not made this their life's mission, but felt the same urgency about the need to change national gun laws. We have to ban assault rifles. They were illegal in 2004 and they have to be illegal again. The teenagers have already influenced so much change. A boycott inspired by them resulted in many major corporations canceling their discount programs for NRA officers. Proposals by even very pro-gun lawmakers like Governor Rick Scott. Senator Marco Rubio to enact some very minor forms of gun control. The NRA is very effective at mobilizing its constituency. The anti-gun movement does not have the same ability to write an email and bring out hundreds of thousands of voters on election day. If the students can change that, then I think we will see some real change because right now in Florida and also in the federal government, pro-gun lawmakers are in control. Sensible gun laws now! I know that wisdom can come from young people. I mean, when you look at many of our activist leaders in the past, they were pretty young. Like many other people, I've been moved by their refusal to back down, the coherent message that they've brought to the debate.